Welcome to worship this morning. We will be worshiping outside, so today we will only have a sermon that is recorded. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you. We ask that you will inspire our hearts as we hear the word read and proclaimed, that you will guide our lives with your grace and love. And that you will help us to see with new eyes as we look around at other people. Thank you for Jesus Christ and his love for each one of us. In Christ we pray. Amen. The first scripture is taken from Mark 1, verses 14 to 15. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. Second scripture is taken from Mark 10, beginning with verse 46. And Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving Jericho, the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which is named Son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to shout, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the wonderful Disney movie Hook, Robin Williams plays a grown-up Peter Pan. He has forgotten all about Neverland and happy thoughts and flying. He doesn't remember the Lost Boys, Tinkerbell, or his rival, Captain Hook who's played by Dustin Hoffman. Robin Williams is an overworked attorney, married and has two kids. He and his family travel to London to honor Wendy, and it's then when Captain Hook kidnaps his children. Tinkerbell drags grown-up overweight Peter Pan back to Neverland, hoping he will remember only Peter Pan can save his children. But Peter Pan doesn't remember. The lost boys look at him and don't see Peter Pan. They see a grown-up adult. Only Tinkerbell sees the Peter Pan inside the grown-up. There's one particular scene where the lost boys are teasing him. And finally, one of the lost boys, whose name is Pockets, grabs him by the tie and pulls him down so he's face to face with the adult. And he looks at him real closely, turns his face to one side, turns his face to the other, looking for Peter Pan inside of this adult. He stretches his face out, squeezes it in, and then his eyes light up. And then he says, oh, there you are, Peter. Then all the lost boys come and do the same thing, and they're all excited. It is Peter Pan. They finally see Peter Pan. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? When you look around, family, friends, neighbors, what do you see? 
when you look at a waitress or a cashier or a person holding a sign that says something about being hungry, what do you see? If you and I were walking on the road from Jericho to Jerusalem, we would see Bartimaeus, a blind man who is begging for food on the side of the road. Look closely. What do you see? What does the crowd see? They look at Bartimaeus and they see him as an outcast, a nobody, no value at all. He is not good enough to be involved in society. He's just an empty person, a nuisance. Anytime he shows up, he wants something, usually money. On this particular day, Jesus and his disciples are walking from Jericho to Jerusalem. They're heading into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And as they walk along, Bartimaeus hears somebody say something about Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. And suddenly, he changes from asking for money to hollering, Jesus, son of David. Have mercy on me. Imagine the scene. How loud do you think he's yelling to yell over the crowd? Hey, hey, Jesus, I need you. Have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. What do the crowds see? They see a nobody. They tell him to be quiet. They hush him, shut him down. As people walk by, each person tells them to be quiet as they're walking along on the way to the Passover meal. What does Bartimaeus see? The blind man. What does he see? What causes him to change from asking for food to suddenly going against the very crowd that could give him money? The very people that feed him He's going against them because something is happening. He sees Jesus from his heart. He knows that Jesus is the son of David, which means he is the Messiah, the one who brings mercy. Of all the people, Bartimaeus knows he needs mercy. Mercy is of undeserved kindness. He knows he does not deserve Jesus' love, but he believes that Jesus has something can help him to see, certainly his eyesight, but also to give him new life, make him whole. Suddenly, because Jesus is walking by and Bartimaeus has this faith, he is able to stop listening to what people are saying about him. He's not going to judge himself by his circumstances, being blind, or what people say about him. He is going to call out for mercy. Goes against the crowd. What does Jesus see? Jesus looks deep in his heart, past the blindness, past what the crowds are saying, and sees a faith. A faith a man who says that Jesus, you are the mercy giver. You have what I need to save my life. Jesus heard that in his repeating, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. His faith says that Jesus can heal him inside and out because of who he is, the Messiah. And so Jesus stops. Isn't that a marvelous part of the scene? Everybody's walking along. They're hushing Bartimaeus. He's yelling. And suddenly Jesus just stops. And everybody else, disciples, stop with him. He turns and says, call him. And Bartimaeus comes running. 
And then finally, of course, heals him. And then tells him to go on his way. And what does Bartimaeus do? He turns and follows Jesus into Jerusalem. When Jesus begins his ministry, he announces that the kingdom of God is here. It's now. That he brings the kingdom of God to earth. John Michael Talbot has a wonderful song. Blessed are the children, for they will be counted as wives. Blessed is the blind man, for he will see with new eyes. Behold now the kingdom. Behold now the kingdom. Behold now the kingdom. See with new eyes. Our faith in Jesus Christ gives us new eyes to look around and see what Jesus sees. You could even say we see with Jesus' eyes. We see past the skin. We look past what political side people are on. We look past if somebody looks poor or looks rich. We look past that, deeper into who the person is and who Jesus is says the person is person of value person of worth in his book dangerous wonder mike iaconelli tells this story he and his wife worked with high school students with young life and in one particular year they met a young man who was obviously having a difficult time he was in trouble with school some trouble with the law Mike found out that his father was an alcoholic and was certainly verbal abusive, if not physically, once in a while. So Mike and his wife took a special interest in this young man, just caring for him, uh, inviting him to their house. Several years later, Mike and his wife were redoing tile in their kitchen. They ordered the tile from a contractor or a company in another town, and that company sent them a list of people that were local who could lay the tile. First person on the list was that alcoholic father. Mike Dacanelli said, no way, don't want him. Take him off the list, call the others and see if they're available. The man did that and called back a few days and said, no one's available according to your schedule. He's the only one. So Mike hired the man reluctantly, told his wife, I'm going to keep an eye on him. I know what kind of person he is, and I'm going to watch his work. I will not be surprised if he tries to add money at the end and steal from us. So he had a little contract written up, had the amount on it, and made the man sign it before he started. It was about a three-day job, and at the halfway through the third day, Mike said to him, after watching him every day, uh, look, you can see me in my office when you're done, and I'll write you a check. The man said, oh, yeah, about that, uh, about the money. He said, I, I want to talk to you about that. Uh, I'll, I'll just meet you in your office after I'm done. So Mike walks back to his office and tells his wife, yep, he's going to do it. He's going to add more money to what we're going to already pay. I'm not going to let him do this. So the man came in, sat down, and he said, several years ago, you cared for my son. I was a lost alcoholic. He said, I'm still an alcoholic, but I have gotten my drinking under control and haven't had a drink in years. But back then, I was mean, I hurt my family, and I almost lost my family. But you and your wife cared for my son. And I just want to thank you for that. So he took the bill, and at the top of it, wrote, paid in full, and handed it to Mike. When we look around at people, do we use our eyes and our limited knowledge and what that person is about. Oh, I know what kind of person he is or she is. Or do we look with these new eyes, the kingdom eyes, 
the eyes that Jesus has given us to see deeper than just what's on the surface. Behold the kingdom we see with new eyes. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.